Rob Dibble, who we had on the show. I don't know, a couple of months ago, it went really well. We enjoyed it. And then Tiki hopped on his show out in Connecticut. And uh, who knows? Could be the start of a nice relationship. Dibs, what's happening, buddy? How you been? Tiki, Tony, how you guys going? Not bad. Not bad. Um, Kershaw. We want to run through a bunch of things here. I got to tell you, Dibs, I'm, I'm worried. I know where, you know, he places historically. Modern lefties. He's right there. Big problem for the Dodgers. What do you anticipate with Kershaw the next month or so? You know, I, I never had a back injury, knock on wood. Um, you know, mine was all in the, the shoulder area, and, and I ruptured my shoulder a couple of times, and that was it for me. But for ba- people with back injuries, I've heard there's nothing you can do when you're in that kind of pain. And, you know, um, I know Tiki has kids. I have three kids. Um, usually you give somebody an epidural when they're pregnant. Yeah. So to give somebody an epidural because he's in so much pain that he, he can't bear to – even pitch um obviously for for baseball players that's very rare so to me it scares me because you know what the dodgers aren't winning without clayton kershaw um he's one of the best guys in in the major leagues if you can add a second or third starter they've got a decent bullpen they should have plenty of offense for 300 million bucks um you know without clayton kershaw they're not going anywhere yeah i agree with that and help us put it in historical terms here because i think when i say it i'm not sure if everybody buys it i didn't play like you did um, obviously, Tiki and I saw uh, an aging Steve Carlton. Uh, his last big season was in the early 80s, as you know. Randy Johnson struggled early, couldn't throw a strike. Uh, Glavin Hall of Famer, but not nearly as dominant as as, um, as Kershaw. I mean, to me, Dibs, he, he's the best lefty I've ever seen. Yeah, and I just moved back here two years ago from L.A. I watched the, the beginning of his career. There was a time he got on a plane with Sandy Koufax for an hour, and he was a little erratic. And he settled down. He started to be able to change speeds with his breaking ball, throw it for strikes anytime in the count. And he has become, by and large, the, the Sandy Koufax of this generation. But again, you know, Sandy Koufax wasn't Sandy Koufax for the first five years of his career. That's right. If you go back and look at his numbers, he was terrible. He threw 100 miles an hour, but he couldn't he couldn't throw that secondary pitch for a strike, couldn't throw a changeup for a strike. And his last five, six years, arguably the best five, six years in the history of Major League Baseball. Now, remember... Back then, they used to throw 300 to 350 innings. We have trouble getting our starters now to throw 250 innings. Mm-hmm. And that's a guy like Clayton Kershaw or Madison Bumgarner or, you know, a King Justin Felix. Verlander. Yep. You know, very few guys can do that anymore. Yeah. And and I think a lot can be said, you know, a good guy you should get on your show, and I said, I, I think I said last time, Leo Mazzoni. He had Glavin, Maddox, and Smoltz. Smoltz was the only one that ever got injured. And his 18 years as a pro pitching coach, only two guys ever had Tommy John. And he believed in throwing every day in moderation, long tossing. Um, you know, you know. and Tiki could talk about this with football. Football, you have to lift weights. Yeah. You have to be big and strong because you, you're taking so much abuse. In baseball, the worst thing for pitchers is to lift heavy weights, to do a lot of swimming, to tighten up your shoulder and, and tighten up your, your chest muscles. Those are things that you want to be loose and uh, elastic and elongated when you're a pitcher. And we've gone from back in the day where guys went to spring training to get in shape to guys have personal trainers year-round. They come to spring training in shape. By the end of spring training, their arms are dead because they're burned out. They've been working so hard. So, again, I'm doing camps and stuff like that to try to teach young kids. You've got to play three sports. You've got to recover. Let your body, your arm recover. A lot of kids – even eight-year-olds are asking me, hey, can you teach me a curveball? Oh, I'm like, geez. I won't even teach a curveball until a kid's 15. Yeah. So for me, it's about we've got to have these kids start recovering. Even the major leaguers, you're rushing Syndergaard, DeGrom, even Matt has struggled because they're rushing these guys to the major leagues at 21-22 where they used to build a base in the minor leagues of 400, 450 innings. Now they throw 100 innings in the minor leagues. They do all their base work at the major league level. Mm. So to Rob Dibble with us, of course, uh, former big league pitcher and a good one. He's with us here on Tiki and Tierney. Rob, you talk about your camp, Rob Dibble Baseball, that's uh, up there in Connecticut. I should send my kids. My boys are in Greenwich uh, with my ex, and they love baseball. And you talk about wanting to learn how to throw a curve. Maybe two years ago, my son's 14 now. That's all he wanted to talk about. How do I throw a curve? How do I throw a slider? How do I do all these things? What do you tell parents of these kids at your camp? And what's the camp all about, by the way, as well? Uh, well, the, the camp is about everything. We're teaching everything. Uh, the basics is this week. We've got 8- to 12-year-olds this week. Next week, I'm bringing Norm Charlton in. He was uh, a pro pitching coach for five, six years with the Mariners. You know, between us, we have over 40 years of 
baseball, professional baseball. To me, it's about, Tiki, when you're teaching pitchers, the best pitch in the major leagues is strike one. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what it is. If it's a changeup, if it's a curveball, if it's a fastball, strike one. And I try to get these kids, you know, I'll get them right now, eight years old. I, I asked them the first day on Monday, show me how to grip a baseball. Not one kid knew how to grip a four-seam uh, fastball type grip. What do they palm it? They do, what do they do? They just palm it, Rob? They palm it, but they teach how to grip it the wrong way. Some of them with the big C, some of them with the seams. Like uh, it's, it's like a two seam. It'd be a sinker. So even in the field, like throwing a football, you want to throw a spiral. In the field, if you're second base, shortstop, which I grew up playing shortstop in center field, you want to be able to try to spin the ball in your hand, get a four seam grip if possible, or get any kind of seam to throw it straight. If you're throwing some kind of you know off center ball it's going to curve to a first baseman. It's going to go away from him. If, if you're throwing it from center field to home plate or to one of the bases, it's going to go offline. So a lot of it is just basic fundamentals of how to grip a baseball, how to grip a bat. You know, if you were you know, trying to teach golf or tennis, um, I have my five-year-old in tennis lessons right now. All the, the coaches working with her is how to grip the tennis racket. Yeah. That's the most important thing is how to grip the bat or a tennis racket or anything. So a lot of these kids, if they're taught wrong, they get into some bad habits, and that's what we're trying to break down here at the camp. So, again, when I look at guys in the major leagues, they struggle getting ahead of the hitters. You know, there's a kid in Boston, Clay Buckholz. He cannot get ahead of the hitters. So now you're uh, – and I'll just give you some stats real quick. A 2-0 and hitter in the major leagues is hitting 400. A guy that you get 0-2 is hitting 150. Yeah, wow. And even that's Albert Pujols or Bryce Harper or anybody, Mike Trout. So, again, at any level, if you could throw two strikes, you could, you could pitch at any level. And it's not about velocity. Another thing that, you know, you've got some guy that I can't stand in Seattle. All he wants to teach is for kids to throw as hard as they can. That's not pitching. You're like the happy Gilmore of playing baseball. You know, <laughs> pitching, pitching is nuanced. The top 10 guys in ERA, those are guys that command three pitches. They command the entire strike zone. They can throw pitches and locate them. You've got guys like Stephen Wright, a knuckleballer, made the all-star team. One of the best pitchers for years was R.A. Dickey. They threw 75 miles an hour. Two of my favorites, and you guys would know these guys growing up, uh, you know, Tommy John was one of the most amazing <laughs> pitchers I ever saw. He won 170 games after he blew out his elbow because he could dot the strike zone, and that's pitching. So, again, we, we try to break it down and simplify it. Like, if you could throw a pitch and hit that catcher anywhere on his body, you could pitch at any level. It's Rob Dibble. Dibs with us here on Tiki and Tierney. Rob, when you start hearing the name Dwight Gooden and you Darvish as it pertains to strikeouts and someone gets compared to them, you got to know that he's in good category. Jose Fernandez becomes the fastest pitcher to get the 500 strikeouts. He did it in 65 starts and faced many, uh, much less batters than those two guys that I just mentioned. It was a point where we were worried about him. He just couldn't seem to stay healthy. But now it feels like He's evolved into, potentially, as a righty, one of the most dominant guys in the league. Are we going to see that? Well, I, I definitely. Jose Fernandez, Noah Syndergaard, I think, has reached 400 strikeouts as quick as those two guys. Again, if you watch them, they get ahead of the batter. They throw strike one, strike two. Um, they, they work the count, and then all of a sudden, they could throw it 59 feet and get guys out. And I, I, I give their pitching coaches a lot of credit. You know, and Mike Maddox was down. Now he's in Washington, and you see Strasburg is thriving. Scherz is striking out the world. Uh, Gio Gonzalez is, is now pitching well again. Um, you know, their pitching coaches do a great job because one of the best pitching coaches of all time, remember Mike Mussina? Yeah. He was one of the greatest pitchers I've ever watched. He could change speeds on all of his pitches, and when he got behind 2-0 and in the count, he slowed everything down. He threw off-speed stuff as well as anybody. So Ray Miller – was an amazing pitching coach. And so these guys are learning, you know, and, and like I said before, you, it's hard to learn at the major league level how to add and subtract to your fastball. You know, if you watch Syndergaard last night, every pitch is 98 miles an hour in maximum effort. You're going to wear out after that. You know, Tiki could tell you when he played with Phil Sims and guys like that, they didn't throw every pass as hard as they could. Some of them are touch passes. Some of them they have to have some control. But, you know, they're very rarely done at a ball. You know, John Elway, he didn't gun every pass. So, for me, when you're, you're looking at some of these better young pitchers, they've already learned, and Arietta finally learned with the Cubs, if you add and subtract, you stay in games longer, the more economical you are, the better you're closer to Greg Maddox. I'll give you a stat on Greg Maddox, one of the greatest of all time. 
Um, average pitches per nine inning start, 77. That's 77. amazing. I watch a major league game now. Guys at 77 pitches in the third inning. That's right. That's right. So, uh, again, if you get to 10 or 12 pitches per inning in junior high or high school or college, you're so far ahead of the game. And now I start watching that with Syndergaard. DeGrom the other night was fantastic. They're right between 13 and 15. That's right where you want to be. And and the less effort you use in the first three, four innings, the more you have left in the tank in the sixth and seventh. And then, of course, if you're with the Yankees, you've got the three-headed monster there. You don't even have to get by 18 out. So, for me, it's a question of, you know, it's not just quantity. It's the quality of these pitches. And Jose Fernandez, after the Tommy John, what happens is you refine your mechanics. You start to add and subtract better. You understand that, you know what, I don't have to throw maximum effort every time. You're going to save yourself for 15 years in the big league. Dibs, good catching up, buddy. We'll tweet out the camp info. We're a little late. Appreciate the pitching breakdown. Well done, buddy. All right, Tiki, next year your kids can come for free, man. Nice. I'm going to send them over to you. Gonna, he's, he's got money. Charge gonna, him gonna, double, Dibs. What are you talking about? They're going to pester free. the heck out of you because like, they pester we're, me, and I don't have answers because I didn't play <laughs> baseball. <laughs> we're only a half hour away in Middlebury. Oh, nice. I love, I love it. I'll do that, Rob. Be, Be well, well Dibs. All right, thanks.